The ROG Xbox Ally X is arguably one of the most exciting Windows gaming handhelds to come out in 2025, but what's not the most exciting is Windows 11. But there is a way around that, and in this video we're gonna install actual SteamOS 3.8 on the ROG Xbox Ally X and see just how good or rough around the edges it actually is right now. So before we get started, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is ensure that the SSD installed in your ROG Xbox Ally X is an SSD that you don't mind completely wiping. So if you care about keeping your Windows stuff or whatever else you have going on, you're gonna to wanna to swap in a different SSD because the SteamOS installer will completely wipe the first NVMe SSD it finds installed. The spare SSD I had lying around was this M.2 2230 size, which apparently the Xbox Ally doesn't have a screw hole for, so I just used this little 3D mounted bracket to make it a 2280 size, and we were good to go. Now that that's in place, let's go ahead and download SteamOS, shall we? So if you watched my previous video about installing real SteamOS on the original ROG Ally, you may be thinking we can just go to the SteamOS recovery image download page, flash that image, and we're good to go, right? Well, no, that is actually SteamOS 3.7.7, which currently, as we can see on this page here, only supports the original ROG Ally and ROG Ally X in beta support, as well as a few other handhelds, but there's no mention of the Xbox ROG Allies, and that is, I believe, because the new Z2 Extreme APU is not supported in that build, and so we need to jump straight to 3.8, and to do that, we need to go to this website here, steamdeck-images.steamos.cloud, and this is basically a repository of preview images of SteamOS. And so once we're on that website, you'll see a big list of all of these version numbers and version names. But essentially all you need to do is spot the latest date available. In my case, I originally checked October 31st, but then realized there was no image.zip in that folder. And so then I went to October 27th. Don't know why there's one that's 0.1, one that's 0.1000 and one that's 0.1100. Let me know in the comments if you know, but I picked one of those and then grabbed the image.zip from within that folder. After that, you can just fire up your flashing tool of choice. In my case, I'm using Balena Etcher. You may use Rufus or even just raw terminal writing. But once you flash that image to a USB, we can then turn our attention over to the Ally. First, we're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure we've powered down the Ally, of course. And then we're gonna hold the volume down button while pressing the power button. And just to be safe, I tend to like to sort of re-tap the volume down button a couple times as I see different boot screens just to make sure that the BIOS registers that BIOS boot key. And if you did it properly, you should now see the ASUS Ally BIOS screen. And the first thing we'll have to do is disable secure boot because the SteamOS image does not support installing the security key like Bazite does, which allows it to run even with secure boot enabled. And so we'll just head over to the security tab and down to this option to disable secure boot. Once that's done, go ahead and hit save and restart and then power down the Ally again. And then we're gonna plug in the USB we just created. Technically, you could maybe do this all in one step, but I like to make sure that Secure Boot has been disabled and then freshly boot into the BIOS with the USB attached. And from there, we'll go ahead and press the boot menu key and choose partition one of our SteamOS boot drive. From there, you should now see some Linux C text scrolling down the screen, which is a great sign. And you're gonna go ahead and leave it for a couple of minutes while it boots into the KDE desktop environment. In my case, out of the box, there was some really aggressive sleep settings. So I found I had to keep tapping the power button to wake the screen back up to see where it was in the process. But eventually I was presented with the KDE desktop and then all you have to do is tap the fourth icon on the desktop, which is wipe device and install SteamOS. It'll give you a prompt saying that this action is irreversible, but since we've got a dedicated SSD in there that we don't mind wiping completely, we're gonna go ahead and tap proceed. This process will take a few minutes, and like I mentioned, your screen might go black, but you can just do a quick tap of the power button to wake it up and see where it is, and eventually you should see a pop-up that says action successful, and you can hit proceed to reboot. And beautifully, after that first reboot, you should now be seeing the Steam Deck Getting Started Wizard where you select your language and your Wi-Fi after which it'll install a few more supplementary files and give you one more reboot. But after that, you'll be booted into the standard Steam login screen with the QR code scanner. And from there, you can just start installing games to your heart's content. One important warning is you'll probably see the little exclamation point with the gear icon on the top telling you, hey, there's an update available. You actually don't want to update as it's probably to update you to 3.77 or 3.78, as it's not expecting you to have already jumped up to 3.8. But from my research, there's not really anything you can do to hide or disable those warnings. So at this point, just ignore those notices and you should be good to go. Another thing to note, so far in my testing of SteamOS 3.8, 
on the ROG Xbox Ally X. Everything seems to be working fine, except I don't appear to be able to open the right slide out menu. I can use both the ROG button and the Xbox button to open the left slide out menu, but I can't seem to open the right slide out menu where you can access TDP and Deki plugins if you install them and performance overlay and battery info and all that kind of stuff, which is rather annoying. I'll pen a comment or something if I come up with a solution to that in the time between filming this video and it coming out. But if you found a solution, please let me know in the comments. And speaking of Deki plugins, let's go ahead and go through how to install those Deki plugins, which maybe will give us a fix to this button not doing anything, as well as probably some RGB control and some proper TDP control. First, we'll head down to power and then switch to desktop. And once we're loaded into the KDE Linux environment here, we're gonna go ahead and open Firefox, or rather we'll install Firefox from Flathub here via the Discover App Store app here. Then we'll go ahead and pop into the URL bar and type in deki.xyz. And then you may be lucky and holding down Xbox key plus X opens the keyboard for you. But in my case, I had to go into Steam, controller settings, and then go down to desktop layout. And the one that was automatically selected was pretty useless. So I went to tap on the layout, templates, and then chose the PC template meant for a WASD game. And then I made a small edit to it and just made the X button show the keyboard. So now when I go into Firefox, my joystick moves the mouse, my triggers are left click and right click. And as I type into something and press X, I have a keyboard. So now we can go to decky.xyz. And from there we can scroll on down to get started and hit download. Open that folder, double click this guy, and we'll say launch, continue. You appear to have not set an admin password. I'm okay with them temporarily setting one. Yes, I'll take release. Install finished, installer cannot be closed, okay. And now to make it easier on ourselves to install the Decky plugins, let's actually set a password we're gonna know what it is that'll stick around. So I went ahead and opened console and then typed P-A-S-S-W-D. I'll go ahead and punch in a new password. I'm gonna call this capital D Decky with an exclamation point. And there we go, password set successfully. And the reason we wanna set a password is for very advanced plugins like this guy, Simple Decky TDP, which is gonna be very useful for actually setting the TDP this guy is using. And so if we scroll on down to the getting started, quick install slash updates, this little command, we'll just go ahead and copy that guy, open up console, and we'll go ahead and right click and paste, bring up our keyboard, hit enter, wants our password, which we now have, enter, and he's good, fantastic. Another one I'm gonna grab is controller tools, which I'm told might be able to let me map this button properly. I did realize that the Xbox button plus A will also open the side menu, so that's kind of resolved. But I'd like for the quick menu button open it too, because that's what it's supposed to do and it kind of does nothing right now. So we'll go ahead and go down to this guy's installation steps. Oh, and beautiful, he's available in the Decky store. So we'll grab that in a second. And lastly, while we're still in desktop mode, if you want to grab a plugin like Decky Hue Sync to have a little more control over your RGB, just go ahead and grab its one liner at the bottom here, pop into your terminal, right click, paste this guy, hit enter. It already has our password in this console and we're done, fantastic. So now we can go ahead and close out of this, close out of this and return to gaming mode. All right, back in gaming mode, I'm gonna go ahead and use Xbox plus A, which opens our side menu, beautiful. And we now have the Decky menu. So you can see we have simple Decky TDP. And in here, now we can enable per game profiles or just across the board, bump things up to 15 or down to 12. And if you wanna go higher than 15, which this ally can obviously do, we'll just take that max TDP and bump it up to like 35, like it does in Windows. And so now, at the very top there, we can take our TDP and bring that nice and high to like say 20, which will give us a lot more performance in our games in SteamOS here. Also over in HueSync, if you wanna play with our colors, we can go ahead and enable LED control. Let's give us a little rainbow effect here. And I don't know about you, but I see no change. So maybe you can't quite control the RGB yet, even with HueSync, so. That's maybe just TBD for when 3.8 becomes mainstream. Now let's go ahead and hop into the Decky Marketplace, which is a super handy way to grab all kinds of little plugins and handy tools like tail scale control if you do private VPN stuff or sync thing to sync custom saves, timers. And what I wanna try is controller tools. Oh, we could have installed a HueSync from right here. Handy. Controller tools, the missing game controller menu. I would love to try that out, please. Controller tools. Guessing that's the built-in controller. Well, that's significantly less helpful than I was hoping it would be. I thought it would let me remap some buttons. So again, if you have a solution to getting this button to open this menu, please let me know in the comments. But thankfully, Xbox key plus A will get that open. So that's the most important thing is just being able to access this menu, especially to get to our Decky plugins, 
especially to get to TDP controls because it's kind of useless to game on a beautiful handheld like this at only 12 TDP unless you only ever want to play things like Stardew Valley. So overall, I'd say if you are a SteamOS purist and you'd prefer not to use the Bazite variant, SteamOS 3.8 feels 90% complete on the ROG Xbox Ally X. I've got audio working, which I don't think even worked on Bazite properly when I tried it. We can install Decky. I can access all my controls. Gameplay feels as expected. Obviously it boots, which 3.7 did not. And so it looks like we finally have a beautiful OS for a beautiful bit of hardware, making this much more of the console that you'd think when it has Xbox in the title. Let me know in the comments if you want to see anything else regarding the ROG Xbox Ally X, and if I missed anything with SteamOS 3.8. And if you like this video, you'll probably enjoy the video where I pit the original ROG Ally versus the Xbox Ally X, and we go deep into performance benchmarks and everything, and the results were quite interesting. So we'll see you over there, and have a great old day.